Welcome to theCUBE's coverage of Dell Technologies 2023 from Las Vegas. And prior to the show, we took the opportunity to dig into a really important topic, railroad safety, which along with rail car maintenance has been in the news lately. And with me are Ali Beers, who's the Director of Product Marketing for Edge Solutions at Dell Technologies, and, and Jeff Nichai, who's the Chief Technology Officer at Duos Technologies, really interesting company. Folks, welcome to theCUBE. Thanks so much for coming on. Thank you. Thank you. Jeff, Duos Technologies, tell us about the company, really fascinating work that you're doing. Sure, Dave. Uh, you know, we develop and install comprehensive uh, rail car inspection portals, uh, which provide a 360 degree view of the train as it's traveling at track speed. Uh, it could be up to about 125 miles an hour. Now, uh, from that, we create high resolution detailed images um, that, that are acquired of the top, the sides, and even the undercarriage of the rail car. Uh, now we use artificial intelligence on those images to automatically uh, identify defects and, and anomalies on those, on those rail cars. Um, we present all of that to uh, rail car inspectors, uh, which basically makes their job uh, easier. It makes inspection faster and more accurate. So in a nutshell, that's that's what uh, Duos does and that's what the rail car inspection portal does. It's pretty amazing for the audience. If, if you Google th this topic, Google Duos, you'll, you'll, there's a really cool uh, video on Facebook and it shows the, the train going down the track, like you said, you have 125 miles an hour. And it's almost like it's going through like a mini car wash that's really high with no scrubbers. And then, so all this happens in like an instant. How does it actually happen? What kind of technology is involved to make this work? Yeah, you know, you mentioned uh, car wash. Actually, some of our customers refer to it as a car wash because a lot of folks uh, think it looks like a car wash. And I guess in this case, it's uh, kind of looks like a train wash. Um, but the rail car inspection portal itself is assembled from the ground up. Um, it utilizes a custom built truss system and a steel canopy over the track, which gives it that look, you know, you have a steel building over the track. Now the canopy provides a controlled environment for imaging and some protection uh, from outside elements uh, like the weather. Now underneath the canopy is where the action really happens. It's where the magic happens. And uh, that includes an array of line scan and area scan cameras, precision optics and lighting systems and lasers and track based linear speed sensors and AEI tag readers and more. So there's a lot of technology packed under that, uh, under that steel canopy. Now, all of this equipment is, it's powered and monitored from a track side uh, edge data center where all of the servers and the power equipment are located. Um, so really, if you wanna know how it works, you know, as the train passes, uh, those mini cameras and sensors uh, and related devices, they scan the train and perform that high resolution imaging. Uh, that image, uh, the, the images and data, uh, they're recorded and stored and, and it's actually processed in real time at track speed. Um, but, you know, the process uh, itself and the processing itself goes far beyond simple uh, image acquisition. Um, like I said, there's a lot of technology being utilized. We, we utilize line scan cameras for high resolution. So the cameras themselves have, have to be synchronized with the speed of the moving train. In addition, to get a usable image of a rail car, uh, we have to undergo a process called car cutting, uh, which, uh, you, you know, it gives you a usable image of each individual rail car uh, independent of the entire train. So there's a lot of stuff, a lot of processing that goes on. And, uh, you know, it's, it's all done there under that car wash head. So we're, that's, uh, that's kind of how it happens. This is unbelievable. So, so this is a huge change, if I understand it. So prior to this, you had inspectors. So the, the train would have to stop, slow down. I mean, stop completely for, I don't know how long, but, but give us the before and the after. What's the kind of the, the ultimate impact that this is having? Yeah, honestly, uh, you know, if, if you're not using remote and, uh, you know, AI assisted uh, rail car inspection, uh, what your rail car inspectors are doing is they're walking the track. Usually they have two or three of them. Uh, they're walking alongside uh, the train and uh, they're crawling in and under, you know, under the rail car to, to see the underside. Uh, so there's a, a big safety aspect to it. Uh, as well as the speed aspect. You, you mentioned the train being stopped. Of course, if I'm going to inspect the train physically, that train has to be stopped. And that's what we call dwell time. 
And so what we're trying to do for the railroads, obviously, is eliminate or limit dwell time as much as possible. So uh, most of the anomalies can be detected uh, remotely, um, just using visualization and uh, thereby, you know, decrease dwell time, increase safety. And uh, that's, that's the target of the, of the solution. So there's a big before and after. So, um, yeah. Very amazing. Hey, you know, Ali, I feel like we've been looking forward to and wait, waiting for this day for a long time. And you guys talk a lot about delivering real-time insights at the edge. Other companies obviously do as well. This is pretty real-time, isn't it? Um, yeah. You know, what's your I take on this? this? Yeah, I yeah. mean, this uh, unbelievable. This is an amazing example of an edge use case. I mean, I think often when we talk about the edge, we're talking about use cases, we're, we're using the words business outcomes, but what it really means when you're delivering real-time insights is that you can go from something that used to be manual into a more automated fashion. What it means is you might have top and bottom line revenue impact, and you're going to have increased accuracy and all these other time savings, well time that Jeff was just talking about. But in the case of duos, not only are they improving this rail car and employee safety and, and enhancing the accuracy of some of their measurements, but this can also help them avoid accidents and ultimately potentially save lives. And it really just doesn't get more important than that. So. This makes sense, of course, because the industry, you got a challenging environment, it's its critical infrastructure and it's its harsh, uh, but like what's inside? I mean, you got compute, you got, you got storage, you got sensors, you got cameras, paint a picture for us, Jeff, if you would. Yeah, you know, well, obviously Dell has been instrumental in uh, partnering with us uh, for the for the last three years. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, for the last five years of the solution. Mm. Um, and most recently, we've kind of changed up the solution to have uh, faster uh, kinds of uh, servers and storage mechanisms. Um, but we have an array of servers and array of uh, networking equipment that we have in there. Uh, you know, for the for the past, uh, like I said, for the past three years. We recently upgraded so that we can do 125 miles an hour. Now, what that represents, just so you know, uh, for two tracks, a train's moving uh, uh, roughly 120 miles an hour. Um, that's a little bit of a, over 80 gigabytes per second, uh, which is an enormous amount of data to be able to store and process. So, you know, we, we certainly rely on, on those uh, uh, the compute power and the storage uh, mechanisms that, uh, you know, Dell have helped us bring to fruition and design the mechanisms that we need uh, to be able to uh, uh, to do that kind of speed. Yeah, and it's it's not just across this industry. I mean, I think this particular use case really highlights the paramount importance of safety and security. But for computer vision, it really does have an impact across multiple industries. If you think about a retail store or grocery store, when something falls off the shelf, somebody can be alerted and um, before a slip and fall accident can occur by somebody in the store, um, computer vision can be used to spot that. Same thing for manufacturing. Somebody can be spotted when they're working too close to a robotic arm or uh, a machine and it can help spot and identify those um, to make it a far better and safer experience. So I think um, just technology at the edge done right can help deliver incredibly powerful insights to help you run your business better, but also to deliver these incredible outcomes and real innovation. So it's exciting to work with customers from across all industries to make these innovations possible. Yeah, I'll bet. I mean, I, I, I'm curious as to what's inside, what's a trackside data center? I don't think I've ever, well, I guess I, I guess some of the race car drivers, you know, they they pump data into a trackside data center. Yeah. But uh, but what does a a railroad trackside data center look like? So the trackside data center for us, it's we call it the edge data center because uh, again, all of the processing and storage is being done at the edge in real time. Um, because the results are required in real time. If I'm going to inspect a, a train and inspect rail cars for safety issues, I want them as quickly as possible. Um, so preferably while that train is moving, right? Uh, so we do everything in, in real time or close to real time. The, the edge data center, which resides track side, is absolutely necessary to do all that processing on site. So inside the edge data center, which uh, some of our customers refer to as a bungalow, but really it's a uh, it's a separate uh, uh, data center. It's a separate server room, right? And so what we have is uh, racks and racks of uh, servers, some dedicated to storage and some dedicated to 
uh, monitoring and control, uh, and some just hosting our software that the customers use. Um, and, and so that array of servers and storage technology is, uh, is, is right there. And obviously it's all environmentally controlled and secured the way it should be. Um, so we don't have to worry about backhauling information to be used immediately back to a, a cloud data center, um, because obviously the, the, the size of the images and the size of the data that we're uh, backhauling would be way too large to get it in a timely fashion. Ali, I'm interested in sort of Dell's role and how you think about it, because when, when you first go back to the beginning of Dell saying, hey, we should do something at the edge, you had a choice. You could do, you could think about, okay, we're going to apply horizontal technologies, uh, but, but you know at the end of the day, it's going to be industry specific. And I think you chose to go, obviously they made the right call with horizontal technology, but here's a perfect example of you're applying it within a specific I industry. So I'm, I'm, my, I'm curious as to sort of how you think about helping, you know, various industries and how applicable this is horizontally. Yeah, there are so many industries now that are requiring immediate access to the data and insights. And, and that does often require processing the data right there at the edge. And when you begin to think about doing this at scale with many locations or uh, distributed geographic footprint across multiple locations, this can get incredibly complex. And so while we've been working with customers at the edge for about 20 years, and we have a very sizable business um, that we've been helping customers with for a long time, we're looking to continue to grow that and to make it easier for customers. And what we see from customers is really three common things that they're generally trying to reduce the things are still too complex. So reduce the complexity that they're seeing. So gain more speed, be able to do it faster and better and less manual. Um, the second one is to do it in a more secure way. And then the third is really to be able to do it at scale. So um, if you think about why this is required and how our strategy came about, it's because the edge is the exact opposite of the controlled environment that you would find in a data center or cloud. The edge is geographically distributed and it doesn't always have a qualified IT person sitting right there. So as you're standing that all up, you, you need to really design it with the end in mind. Otherwise you're going to grow use case by use case and, and stack by stack, and you're going to end up with a lot of snowflake solutions that are really difficult to manage and secure um, in, in mass. So our goal for our customers is really to help them simplify their edge. And we do that with the best in class infrastructure that Jeff was referencing. We also do it though with our expertise in vertical solutions, much like you were just talking about. So we have um, practice experts that specialize in particular industries that come to the table with a depth of, and breadth of knowledge to help our customers through particular industry specific situations. And we actually build also validated solutions and designs so that our customers can have a faster time to value when they're trying to put solutions together. And our latest evolution of that is that we're continuing to help customers um, innovate and to do things in a less manual fashion with Project Frontier and the announcements that we're making at Dell Technologies World around that. So we're really excited um, with our edge operations software platform to help customers do some of those things to help them simplify their edge in a much easier way. Yeah, it's so cool to see this come to fruition because we've been talking about it for, for a while and to see it in real life. It, 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 Ellie, it's pretty remarkable that think what you can do with a couple of cameras, <laughs> maybe maybe more than a couple, but still you got some sensors and, and it can tell you what's happening on this multi-ton railroad road car. Jeff was talking about bits, I can't think in my head, bit slicing to get to the different cars <laughs> and, and really understand each you know, individual car on the, on the train. It's pretty mind boggling the, how much technology is sitting right here, all, all at the edge, kind of as an independent entity, right? I mean, you're doing all the processing there, is that correct? Yeah, that's, that's true for sure. And Jeff, you, you can speak to it as well, but like, I think what's really amazing about it is that you can begin to see those data and insights in aggregate, no matter where that infrastructure is deployed. So of course, we're talking about one specific instance or, um, at the track side, but of course you end up with a lot of those locations. So providing customers with access to their data in a real-time fashion really creates game-changing opportunities for them to unlock new innovation and see trends and make decisions that they never knew possible before. 
do you do you persist the data? Do you send any of the data back for analysis? Well, how's that all work? So we do. Uh, I mentioned AI. We have uh, artificial intelligence, machine learning models that we use to detect anomalies and uh, any, any kind of defects on a rail car. So um, what happens is a lot of the uh, results from that uh, are verified in real time, both by rail car inspectors, as well as by a team of data scientists and, and uh, some folks that we have uh, back at our office here in Jacksonville uh, in our 24 seven data center. Um, so they're looking at those uh, results in real time. And what we do is we, we, uh, we have a continuous learning approach uh, that basically we feed those results back through uh, the, uh, the data science portion of the artificial intelligence to make those models better over time. So that's one of the ways that we use, uh, I think, you know, the aggregated data from all of our uh, uh, rail car inspection portals. And the other way, obviously, again, I mentioned 24-7 uh, support and monitoring uh, for these uh, critical systems. Um, it, it's done. We reach out to every single one. We're monitoring every single one in 24-7 capacity. Um, and so now, as far as data, uh, there are certain portion of the data that we do aggregate to our data center here. Um, but it's mostly for analytical purposes. So the images, that's the big buckets of data. Uh, that have to remain on, on track side simply because we don't we don't need to aggregate them here. Uh, they remain in those in those uh, uh, edge data centers. I, right. I hope that answered the question. Yeah, you don't want to. I hear you. You don't want to push all those images through some thin pipe. Right. You'd have to you'd have to put them on a you know some kind of mobile right. device and ship them somewhere. That's and what's right. the point, right? Yeah. So yeah. where where is this is this Worldwide, nationwide, where is it deployed today and, and where is it headed? So we have uh, 13 portals and they're deployed uh, in North America. So both here, uh, you know, in, in domestic uh, US as well as uh, Canada. And we also have uh, a couple in Mexico as well. So uh, it's it's here, we're looking to go international. Uh, we, we are talking to folks, uh, you know, internationally. And uh, so we're, we know that, uh, you know, it, it's going to grow because there's been a lot of interest in it uh, and folks are getting very, very serious about it. Um, so we see the benefits. I mean, the benefits are real and they're undeniable. So Al, I'll give you the last word. How do you see the future? I mean, obviously we have this use case that is very specific to rail, right. but, it, but it sounds like there's so much opportunity here for, for Dell and your customers. There's, to think about there it really the future. is, and I think we're just at the beginning of really being able to unlock so much innovation. So this is being driven by the fact that compute is smaller and less expensive and that you can put sensors, small sensors now into so many different things. So um, I feel like we're just at the beginning of this chapter and um, our goal will be to help customers to do that in a scalable way over time where they can have the ability to manage and secure and life cycle all of their compute that sits out there, whether it's trackside in a retail store, on a manufacturing floor, um, or otherwise, to help customers. We've been, like I said, we've been just waiting for this day for years. We've we've written about and talked about how most of the modeling, well, most most of the AI work today is done in the cloud for modeling, but but AI inferencing at the edge is going to explode, and we give a bunch of examples. This is not one that we predicted, but uh, but it's a good one. And I think there are many more to come. Guys, thanks so much, Allie and Jeff, for coming to theCUBE. It was great to have you on. Thank you. Thank you so much. All right, keep it right there for more coverage from Dell Technologies World 2023 in Las Vegas. You're watching theCUBE.